They call the James Webb Space Telescope the successor to the Hubble. And it, it is in the sense that it's the next large major observatory going up in space. But it's kind of also not the successor to the Hubble at all. Instead, it's more of a successor to the Spitzer Space Telescope, which you probably haven't heard of. Maybe you have, maybe you have. I don't want to assume, but it's certainly, you know, Hubble's much less famous brother happening up in space. Spitzer is an infrared telescope, and Hubble is an optical telescope, primarily at the wave, same wavelengths that your eye sees the world and the universe. A little bit of infrared and a little bit of ultraviolet, but mostly optical. So it takes a picture just like your cell phone takes a picture, except bigger and in space. James Webb is also going to be an infrared Telescope, So it will take pictures, it will do spectra, it will do so much cool science stuff, but it's not going to be in the visible spectrum of light. It's going to be in the infrared. And the reason they chose infrared for the next generation of space telescope was a few reasons. One is that when it comes to optical astronomy, you just don't get a lot of really bang for the buck anymore by going up into space. You know, when the Hubble was launched in early, late 1980s, early 1990s, when it was being designed and launched and everything... You, there was no point in having a big observatory on the ground for optical wavelengths because the shifting in the light's atmosphere, or sorry, the shifting of light in the Earth's atmosphere just made it pointless. Like you'd collect more light, sure, by having a big old mirror, but because of atmospheric distortion, you weren't really getting a better picture anyway. So you had to go up into space. But then we really developed and perfected this technique called adaptive optics, where we, from the ground, we can shoot a laser up through the atmosphere, watch it wiggle around, and then counter all the motion of the atmosphere. So if the atmosphere wiggles left, you, you move the mirror left, right? You, you track it and you cancel out the effects of the atmosphere. And this was what allows us to build giant ground-based observatories, which now outclass the Hubble by like, you know, some random factor that I'm going to make up by a factor of 15 ground-based observatories are better than the Hubble. And so nowadays in the modern era, Unless you have a very specific goal like exoplanet hunting or going doing galaxy surveys, there just really isn't a huge need to have an optical telescope in space anymore. But infrared is a completely different story. Infrared, not only do you have to fight that whole atmospheric distortion thing like you do an optical, but in infrared, there's so much more light pollution on the ground. You know, when you build an observatory, an optical observatory, you want to get away from cities. You can't run it during the daytime. You, know, you, have to, you have to get rid of all other sources of light so you can focus on the stars. Same for infrared. You have to get rid of all sources of infrared light, which is everything. You, the telescope itself, planet Earth are all glowing in infrared. So it's like trying to do astronomy with someone shoving a flashlight right in your face. Like, is this annoying? Is this annoying? Yes, it is. <laughs> Infrared astronomy from the ground is very difficult. We have to take our instruments and we have to chill them down close to absolute zero to get rid of all that background light from the instrument itself in the nearby vicinity. It's just really challenging. Plus, our atmosphere has lots of water and carbon dioxide and more by the minute and methane in it. And all of these molecules absorb infrared Wavelengths. That's the whole point of this whole greenhouse effect that everyone's all talking about. And so if you want to see some awesome infrared light coming from a distant supernova or protoplanetary disk or whatever, that light gets literally absorbed by our atmosphere and you're out of luck on the ground. We do have infrared observatories on the ground, but they're very, very challenging. Space, though, is still an excellent environment for doing infrared astronomy. Why? 
because you can put things far away from the earth. And the earth is really hot in the infrared. And by putting things far away from the earth, you can do some awesome astronomy. This is one of the reasons why the James Webb is going to be a million miles away from planet earth. Right. The Hubble was like 350 miles above the Earth's surface in orbit. And remember back in the early 90s, it launched and it got all blurry because there were just like some bad choices or, or the people responsible for making the primary mirror did it wrong and got blurry images. So we had to send up the space shuttle crew, put on like an adaptive lens on it to fix it. It was all hilarious and expensive, but we could do it. James Webb doesn't have that option because it's going to be a million miles away. We launch it once and that's going to be it. That is a huge challenge. That's one of the reasons why this telescope is just so delayed because if something breaks, if we get it wrong, it's just done. We don't get around to, we don't get a repair mission. There's no crew that's going to go out there to fix it. It's just done. No upgrades. That's it. And even being a million miles away from the earth, it's still going to be too hot because of this giant infrared emitter in our solar system known as the sun. So they're going to, that's why James Webb has this giant, giant sun shield. It's basically a big, fancy, expensive parasol. It's like 22 meters by 10 meters. There's five different layers. It's super highly reflective. It's all fancy and costs like, I don't know, a billion dollars or two just to make. The whole point of it is to keep it facing towards the sun so the rest of the instrument can sit in the shadow and stay nice and cool. Target is below 50 Kelvin. And still even then, one of the instruments on board, the James Webb, wants it to be even colder. And so it's going to have its own cooling system to bring it below 15 Kelvin. So we're no matter what, we're talking close to absolute zero here. So it can do proper infrared astronomy. As to what kinds of science it will do, you gotta wait till next week. And my next video, I'll talk all about the science of James Webb Space Telescope. Thank you so much for watching. Please go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter to keep these videos and all my education outreach activities going. Like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want. It's a free country, uh, but just try to stay chill like the James Webb. And I'll see you next week.